All right, what we're going to look at here is how to do the third angle orthograph projection of this object that they've given you two, um, two views of. They've given you a front view and a top view. Um, that's, they've told you that you've got a pictorial view. In the question over here, it says the given figure shows a pictorial view. They actually haven't given you a pictorial view because a pictorial view would be a three-dimensional image of it. Okay, so... I've drawn out a pictorial view of the object um, just to show you what it looks like. There we go. There's the right view, um, there's the front view, and there's the top view. Now, um, they've asked you in the question to draw a full sectional front view of the object. Um, and that's going to be a bit tricky because, well, they haven't given you a sectional view of it. Um, so what I've done here is I've drawn out a sectional, a full sectional front view of the object as a three-dimensional thing, just to show how that cutting plane has gone through the center of the object, cut through, and you can see where the saw blade has touched the object, uh, leaving its saw teeth marks. The only problem is over here, you can see that there's this, um, this bit over here, this slopey bit over here, that's called a web. And when we're doing a First, uh, a, a orthographic projection as a section. We don't section the web part of it. Okay. Um, right, let's get going and start drawing the front view of this thing. Normally what I would suggest is that you would go ahead and you would try and find the, the view that you've got the most circles in. But right now we don't actually have a view that we can copy. So I'm going to suggest that we go ahead, we copy this front view as best we can, draw it as a sectional view, and then we can go on and draw the right view from that. Right, let's start. Um, my first step is I would suggest draw a center line. All right, doesn't really matter how long that center line is. And we're going to work from that center line. Okay, there's my center line going over there. And it says that I've got a 12 millimeter diameter over here. They also say in your um, in your question over here that you are to use a scale 2 is to 1. So whatever measurement you see over here, you must automatically double it. Um, well, first of all, let's just write in support where it says title. Write in the scale. Scale 2 is to 1. Please don't forget to actually write the word scale. Um, and then you've got to draw that little symbol showing that it is a third angle orthographic projection. There are a whole bunch of marks over here, normally two marks there two marks there and two marks here. So don't forget those um, little bits of information down at the bottom. Okay, after you've drawn that center line, I'm going to take my 12 millimeter measurement, 12 millimeters, come along to my center line and I'm going to draw a little arc over there, a little arc over there. I know that I can now go ahead and I can draw in a construction line coming across over there, a construction line coming across over there, and I know that I've got 24 millimeters because I measured off 12 millimeters, and doubling it would be 24. So um, once I've got that, um, I look up here, it says 4 plus 4 plus 12, and that gives me 20. So I measure off 20 millimeters. There we go, measured off 20 millimeters. Come over here, 20 millimeters plus 20 millimeters gives me my 40 millimeters that I need. And I can draw a line coming down over here and a line coming down over there. And there is that cylindrical part drawn in over there. I extend that out at the back over here and we can measure from the top of this object, uh, which is, sorry, we haven't done that 20 millimeters. Let's measure off 20 millimeters again. 20 millimeters going up there and 20 millimeters going up there. That's the 20 millimeter diameter. You'll note that that from there to there is 40. So I've got the correct cylinder shape that I need, just a construction line and a construction line. I can actually draw that line in dark to start with. 
Um, we're going to move from the center down 24 millimeters, it says. So measure of 24 millimeters. Go to that center line, mark that off there, go down again, 24 millimeters. So we've got 24 plus the 24, and that will give us that line going across there. There we go, okay. Um, okay, once we've got the 24 millimeters coming down, it says 14 millimeters, measure that off very accurately. From my line over there, 14 millimeters and 14 millimeters over there. And I can draw in my line over there. And I can then draw in a line going from the top to the bottom of this thing. Um, it says that I have the space over here that is four plus four, so that would be eight millimeters. Oops. Measure of eight millimeters accurately. Go over there, there, and there. And I can draw in a construction line coming up over there. Um, it says from my line over there, I can come all the way across. That's 44 millimeters, it says at the top there. So I measure off 44. Let's just measure that very quickly. 44 millimeters, let's go one, two across to there. And drop a line going down there. Um, Okay, we've got this line coming across from there, and I can now measure it down. It says four millimeters down. Let's go there. Okay, four times two would be eight millimeters, so I'm gonna measure off my eight millimeters. Measure that over there. Come in over here, do a construction line coming across there. Oops. Let's drop my pencil. Uh, it says that I um, I need to come down another six millimeters. Six multiplied by two would be 12. 12 millimeters from there, coming down to there. I can draw that in. And that little piece at the bottom, it says that that's eight millimeters. So I can come over here and measure off eight millimeters. Multiplied by two would be 16. Measure that off, mark that off over there. And I now have what I need for this front view. Right, I can draw in a line going up there, a line going across over here, a line going straight up there, a line coming across to that little story over there, which is, that's four millimeters they say over there, so I need to drop that line down. Okay, remember I measured the four millimeters and the four millimeters, um, which was giving me the center of that. If you don't know where the center of that is, probably the quickest and easiest way of getting that would be just to draw a line from the corner there and from the corner there, where those two lines intersect will give you the exact center of that, which is what you're needing. I can draw a line going up over here, from there to there. I can draw a line coming across from there to there. I can draw a line going across from there to there. And I can draw a line from there to there there to there, come up to the cylinder part, draw a line going across like that, draw a line coming down like that, and I can draw these two lines going across like that, and across like that. I've also got that slopey bit over there. Um, they say that that is 16 millimeters going out from there to there, so I measure off 16 millimeters as fast as I can. 16, 
once, 16 twice, and I can drop a line coming down from there in order to get the intersection of where that slope comes down. From there to there is where my slope is. And now what I need to do is I need to do the hatching of this thing. Let's just have a look at what the view looks like. You can see the hatching where it's going, except for that web. I need to do that hatching. So how do I do that? I take my 45 degree set square, I come over here and I draw as fast as I can the hatching going across this front view to show where that saw blade cut through things. Does it matter which direction this hatching goes in? No, it can go in either direction. It really won't make any difference at all. Just as long as you get the equal spacing. I'm using the bevel of the ruler over here in order to get that equal spacing. Note, I've got hatching over there. I can see that I can come down to the bottom over there and do a bit of hatching there as well. Hatching there. Try to save yourself time by not having to go back and hatch parts that you can hatch by just continuing your line from one part to the next. There we go, up to where the web is. I'm not hatching that web, as I said. There we go. Oops, let's just go back over here. I can do that part as we're going across rather than maneuvering my ruler too many times. There we go. Keep going. There, there. Note that I'm pushing my pencil when I'm doing the hatching. Um, you'll find that your accuracy is much better. It's like a car driving to a stop street. You slow down before you hit the hit the stop street, and it's much, much quicker that way. Start there. You can slow down just at the end so that you don't go over the lines. Start on the line and slow down. There we go. That is my front view completed. Right, in the next video that I do, I'm going to be looking at getting the right view of this object over here. Um, and I will do that now.